another cultural and individual difference, not Hofstede anymore, this is just a different concept, a different theory, is called locus of control. As the environment around you changes, you can either attribute your success or failure to things you have control over, mainly yourself, or to forces outside your influence. Do you feel things happen because of destiny, fate, predestination? Are things pretty much inevitable? Are we pretty much programmed to our behavior? Are we powerless to change our world? Or can we realistically think that our choices will change things? If something is unsatisfactory, can we change it? Or must we accept it? Do you feel driven to take action to change things? Or is it better to accept that things are the way they are? Neither one of these perspectives is right or wrong. They're cultural perspectives. So here are some of the various dimensions of culture. And note there is nothing about dress or music or dancing. When we talk about culture, we mean how people interpret their world differently and how that shapes our behavior. Our first step, the first step that you should do is to accept that we really do see things differently. And the second is to realize that our way isn't automatically the right or normal or best way. Our way is just different. This is tough to do. We want to believe there's a right way and a wrong way. Our culture has taught us this, and that's why we believe our culture is better than others. We don't like this sense that everything is relative. So when you get people together from different cultures and subcultures, all believing that their way of seeing the world is the right way, these different perspectives can cause misunderstandings, and that's what's called cross-cultural miscommunication. There's a phrase often used now called cultural competence. That means that a person is aware of how culture can affect communication. They don't assume that there's only one way to communicate. They don't assume that they know what a person is thinking because of body language or gestures. They realize different cultures act differently. They take steps to assure that when they're with those different cultures, they are cautious of their assumptions. In an increasingly globalized world, we look for leaders who have this cultural competence. One thing's for certain, if you're a public manager in the United States, you're going to often deal with groups from different cultural backgrounds than yours. This week, we're gonna take our first step into the management arena with something we call a diversity audit. Remember, this class is about managing diversity. You're gonna look at an organization preferably one that you currently work in or have worked in, and you will identify what it's currently doing in this area we call diversity. You have to know what's being done now before you can propose change. So what's happening in your organization now? What attempts are being made to manage the reality of diversity? Are there required trainings of who? How often? Are there posters on the wall reflecting different values? Is there any kind of affirmative action program? Is there a diversity officer or a diversity office or affirmative action office? Is there workshops or training in the law? Is there a complaint system of some kind? The readings in this section are critical. They're gonna help you address this concept of a diversity audit. You don't have to follow their formats, but they provide ideas. The diversity audit will make up the first part of your diversity management plan. Because as I said, you gotta know what's happening now before you can propose changes. And these readings give examples of what a diversity audit is.